Hey everybody, video here for you today. Now I want to thank somebody who sent me a message earlier in the week, got me to look into some mounds in Kentucky, and the story I'm doing today is not related to their message, but their message got me to look into this story. And I've done over 150 Ancient America videos, and this one was pretty surprising, though not so surprising, but this history has been totally wiped from the slate. Looking into this yesterday afternoon, I looked into the history of Louisville for a couple hours and I found it fascinating. But you see I have some pin placements here right in the heart of the city. But I have said in other videos, cities like Minneapolis, St. Paul, so Detroit, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, and others, the first things in those cities were not built by colonists. They were structures that were maybe 15, a couple thousand years old built by the mound builders as we call them because we don't know who they are. But here in the heart of Louisville, there are some places that are marked on my map, but this is the first one we are going to talk about today. Let's just go down to street level, see what's here today. But here, a state building exists today. You kind of have to go back to the 1800s, and we're going to do that in a little bit. But today, a state building sits where a mound that was part of a mound complex and a city and a plaza totally wiped from history. This is where it existed, right here. And here is a map showing where the mounds were. Here is that area of the Grayson Mound I showed you. There was a house here standing there for about 150 years that was actually built on top of the mound, but it extended all the way past Jefferson Street with mounds and there's even some stone structures found in this area. But just north of the Grayson Mound, around Jefferson and Green Street, between 6th and 5th, there used to be a pond here. But this hypothesized reconstruction of this mound city, how old was it? Well, you people in the comments section can comment to that fact because no professional archaeological excavation was ever done here. But the very first structure built by settlers here was on top of the mound, and that later became a house. And I'll talk about that in a second. But the city of Louisville was laid out from the mound itself. And that really goes to what I was saying, that a lot of these cities, the very first things were mounds. And then the city was just kind of laid out from very ancient ruins. Now here's the Guanthi Grayson House. This existed here from the early 1800s till I believe the middle of the 20th century until that state building was erected on that site, what is now the heart of downtown. But if you notice here, this house is built up, and this is built on top of one of the mounds in the ancient city. Now here is a good PDF I found about historic Louisville, but figure three, the Grayson House atop a prehistoric mound, and this comes from 1954 here. Pretty cool car sitting there. It says, a portion of the mound upon which the house stood was used as a borrow site to fill Grayson's pond or lake, a favorite recreation spot which lay directly north of the house. The remainder of the mound was left intact beneath the old house. With time, the track was subdivided, and in 1849, St. Paul's Church was built next door to the Gwalthme Grayson House upon the site of the destroyed portion of the mound. The two adjacent property tracks upon which stood the church and the house measured 174 feet by 204 feet in dimension, providing some indication of the size of the mound site that straddled the two lots. The tract included a beautiful lake, which was called Grayson's Pond, forest and orchard trees, and two burial grounds. This article supports the notion that there was at least two mounds on the Grayson estate that extended from Cedar to Walnut Streets and from the Center Street to 7th Street. The second mound, measuring several hundred feet in circumference, also adjoined the lake. The 1926 newspaper article also clearly states that reported burying grounds were located within the mounds. In 1867, the Gwalthme Grayson House became occupied by J.C. Bumgarner. With later improvements of the house, Bumgarner continued to find artifacts, including a perfect battle axe of stone. Over the course of the Gwalthme Grayson Bumgarner occupation, the mounds yielded stone axes, flint arrowheads, pipes, earthenware, and such implements that are usually found in old mounds. They also contained human bones so far advanced in decomposition that they went into dust on exposure to air. As recently as 1888, Mr. Bumgardner dug from 
his lot a very fine specimen of a Neolithic axe. And how did he know it was Neolithic? Well, this place appears to be very ancient. The bones disintegrated into dust on exposure to air. And we have read about some pre-dynastic remains coming from Egypt that did the same thing. So how old were these? That's all up for speculation. But here's an old drawing of St. Paul's Church located right by the Grayson Mound. And this was built on the spot where an old mound used to be. Here is another early map of Louisville. A lot numbers are plotted out here. They show a mound between Preston and Floyd Streets. Here is a drawing from 1856, St. Paul's Church in the area around 6th Street and Green Streets where the mound site was. Here is a map from 1865 and a mound depicted on Goose Island out in the river here. But here's another website I found and it describes the pond just north of the home and it was a pretty popular place. It says the pond extended from Walnut almost to Green Liberty Street today and from 6 to Cedar Streets and was one of the attractions of the city in early times. But the pond was filled in in 1823. Where did they get the fill for the pond? Well, from these mounds and from the mound here on the Grayson property. There could have been two of them. It says in later years, Sarah Grayson would remark that her happiest times at the house were before the great pond was filled in. The pond had been a favorite place for folks to gather and many were upset when Fred Grayson put his servants to work filling in the pond with part of the mound next to the residence. In the process of digging, many relics of the past were unearthed and the people were really upset that the mound was being used to fill in the pond because they didn't want the pond filled in. They didn't care so much about the mound. But it seems there was a few ponds in here and one of them got filled in right in this area between 6th and 5th and Jefferson Streets in here. What did they use to fill it in? The mounds and that included artifacts, pottery fragments, stone implements and the bones of the ancient people. And it goes on to say Grayson may have filled in the pond as a precaution against disease. During Louisville's early years, frequent bouts with cholera and typhoid fever were blamed on stagnant water and resulting bad air. And the pond was filled in in 1822 and just by chance in 1823, disease really killed a lot of people in Louisville. And then here it says the church that was built where the mound used to stand, the church burned in 1894. But it seems like today's city of Louisville and even the mound that this home sat upon are just periods of history that go back almost to the end of the Ice Age. Now back here, there is also what was described as a conical mound up at Sutherland Farm up in this area up here in the top right. And also down here, just south of the city, the Kentucky Air National Guard site. Have you ever heard of that? Well, let's just talk about it briefly. Here it says, research by the University of Louisville concluded that the Kentucky Air National Guard site was part of the old Clarksville phase, a group of middle archaic sites straddling the Ohio River in the vicinity of the Falls, Ohio, dated circa to 8,000 to 6,400 years ago. 8,000 to 6,400 years ago, including a prehistoric component at the old Clarksville site. And a lot of these names, I think people studying history, they like to come up with these names and then put certain remains in certain groups just so it sounds like they know what they're talking about. But there are many rock shelters in the area and maybe somebody familiar with the area can comment on these, but it seems humans have been here all the way back to the end of the last ice age at least. Now, I'm just going to read a little bit from a book called The Centenary of Louisville. Here we dispose to look deep into the distant past, to peer into a time to the confines of which neither history nor tradition reaches. We have some evidence to show that when all was dark and unknown in the place now occupied by the citizens of Louisville, it was possessed by a race of human beings who lived long upon the earth, progressed in some branches of the arts, and who passed away without a history, a tradition, or a name. We call them the Mound Builders, and besides attributing to them 
certain tumuli, and works found upon the surface of the earth, pieces of pottery for domestic use, stone hatchets, flint arrowheads, and numerous artifacts of use, and ornaments supposed to have been made by them have been found mingled with human bones in sinking wells and excavating cellars deep down below the present plain upon which Louisville now stands. In a large mound that stood at the intersection of Walnut and Sixth Streets, and and others at the northeast corner of Main and Fifth Streets, human bones, stone axes, flint arrowheads, and different articles of use, and ornaments belonging to the Paleolithic period were found. In cutting the channel of the canal around the falls, there were found in the alluvian deposit, twenty feet below the surface, a number of implements made of stone, plummets made of hematite of iron, and a hearth made of flat stones with charred ends of wood upon it, and the human bones near to it, in the lower part of the city, and still greater depth of forty feet below the present surface were found a stone hatchet, and a pestle near a hearth on which it lay on the north, in a gravel pit at the corner of 14th and Kentucky Streets, at a depth of 25 feet below the surface, was found the tooth of a mastodon among many human bones and implements of the Stone Age. Here we have facts from the ethnologist might infer that man have been here contemporary with the mastodon, that a race of human beings dwelt where Louisville now stands, possibly before the pyramids were built, and that we are now erecting a great city over former habitation of men so long passed away that the dust of ages has accumulated to the depth of forty feet above the place that now knows them no more forever. But certainly an interesting one for me to investigate. I started looking into this and I wasn't even in the mood to research, but once I started, I couldn't stop on this story. Here, down in this area of town, stone graves were found by early colonists, and that's the way they are described. Over here on the other side, some stone mounds were found, totally lost to history. The story of ancient Louisville was pretty fascinating. These mound sites were treated differently in different parts of the country in Louisville. The story seems to be totally lost to history. Perfect for my Ancient America series. I learned a heck of a lot doing this one. The history in Louisville is a lot like these cities like Minneapolis, Chicago, Detroit, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, other ones like St. Louis. The first structures were ancient mounds built by a race of unknown people. Hope you thought that was interesting, and you all have a very nice day.